Hello everyone, Tammy here. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a fantastic Friday. So today, let's see what we got going on. Hang on. Um, sorry, thought I was ready. Okay, so I got this, I got my package from Joann's. Um, it literally looks like it's been run over. Um, yeah, I haven't opened it yet. Got it yesterday. So let's... I thought it would come in a box. There's like... I ordered glass beads. You would think that... They'd be a little more careful of packing, but... What do I know? Okay, so... Let's see. Oh, goodness. I can tell already that I love these. Oh, too much fun. Okay, so let's first look at the um, ribbons. At least they wrap the glass beads in, um, in bubble wrap. So this... Um, I wanted to be able to make some, some more dangles and things, and I want to make them longer. However, I don't know anything about beading, and so I don't know anything about sizes of wire. I think I want, I think I wanted thicker wire. Hmm. Don't think this is what I want, but I might try it. It's um. Is it even metal? So it's 0 0.024 inches. Somebody tell me if that's thick or not. Um, it says, oh, nylon coated stainless steel. Hmm. Not sure I wanted that, but I'll play around with it. Um, I was hoping for something slightly thicker, but um, I'll use it. I'll see what happens. It was, um, it was the only thing I bought that was not on sale, and I think, so there's no packing slip in that. It's kind of annoying. Well, anyway, so I got some place and time fall ribbon. Um, these were not $3.99, they were like a dollar. So I didn't realize this one has sparkles on it. I love it. Okay, so that's fun. That's going in my overflowing um, fall bin. And then I got these. I didn't know these were sparkly either. Like, I'm so excited. I might have bought more if I knew. I think these were around like a dollar also. Somewhere between like a dollar and a dollar fifty. Look how pretty that is. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, I forgot I was going to close my window because the gardeners are in the neighborhood, but they're not being super loud right now. So there we go. We got purple and gray. They had a navy for sale too, but I didn't buy it. This was all on doorbuster deals, everything I got here. And everything I bought was like so far marked off. It was very cool. So I love the ribbon. Okay, so let's, oh, whoops, knocking thing is over. So let's open this bad boy. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> this is like a hundred times better than I was expecting. Okay, so, so you can see like some of these fell off. I don't know why they wouldn't put these in a box. These are glass beads. Look at that. They're little bees. These were, so most of these were right about the 10 to $15 a string um, for one of these. Um, some were, I think a couple I got were eight, seven or eight, um, but they were having a doorbuster sale. So you got four strings, no matter what the price was, for $10. So 
um, that's pretty good. That's like, what is that? Two bucks a piece. Yeah, so I got these just because I couldn't resist. They're so cute. Might look cute on um, a charm hanging from a Edith Holden journal um, that my friend Carol and I are going to be starting soon in September. I'm so excited. Okay, so this, look at this. Aren't those gorgeous? Oh, I'm so excited. These are so pretty. Ah, uh, I didn't realize that Joanne sold um, beads by, by the, um, by the string. So I believe these were a boho. I think they were called. Uh, again, I'm in love. These are so pretty. I think I got two of these. Yeah, here's another one. Got two of the same. I loved them so much. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And then I got two snowflake. Um, these aren't technically beads, but they are charms. And they're stunning. Oh, I'm so excited. So, so, so pretty. Okay, and then... I feel like I'm missing something here. But we'll count them in a minute. How fun are these? So these are Christmassy, I thought. So I got two of those. So two, that's four. Yep. Yep, two, three, four. So yeah, so this is all of these uh, beads and charms were $20. So I feel that's... I feel like that's how much they should cost instead of, you know, like $10 for one of these. I feel like that's like extremely overpriced. Um, they're all um, Hildy and Joe. So that was the doorbuster was all of the Hildy and Joel, uh, Joe um, uh, beads, strings of beads. So yeah, I'm going to have to keep an eye out and go buy more when they have them on sale. I would love to have a bunch of these in all different colors. That would be cool. Okay, so that's my haul. Um, I feel like I got something else. Well, I did, but I showed you those. I got the books from Amazon. Or not books, but um, tarot stuff. Okay, put these out of the way. Then the where should I put these? Okay, found a spot. Okay, so um, I'm going to do I'm gonna do a, a little crafty bit while I'm answering the question of the week. And the question for this week which might go into next week. I'm not sure how long it'll take me to um, answer. And I want to make sure that I'm pretty much in frame. Just um, raise the camera back just a little bit. So it's from Justine at House of Mahalo. And she asks, um, she says, I'd love to hear more about your time living in Hawaii. Where did you live? Which island? How long did you live there? Why did you end up living in Hawaii? And what stories can you tell us, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, I, love talk I love talking about when I lived in Hawaii. Um, but before I start answering, um, it's really appropriate that I'm doing that question from Justine today because this is um, from her, uh, she's doing a, a little fun a junk journal bingo game on um, her Facebook site which is called junk journal ideas and inspirations and um, really fun really super active um, Facebook group I do not participate there anywhere near as much as I should but I have been doing all of the little activities so I'm gonna keep that going so 
Complete your bingo card by September 1st, uh, 22, to enter our fabulous giveaway. So um, I haven't done anything here yet, um, but I'm going to do uh, make a collage master board. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to... I'm not... I'm, I want to use this, I think, as my cover for my Edith Holden journal. I think um, I'm not sure if it's going to be big enough because I want it. I want it to have a little bit of a spine. Well, I might be able to cut it and then yeah. Okay, I think I think this will be good. So I was thinking this could be the ins the inside. Um, I think it's really pretty and then the outside I'm going to collage. So that could change. Like I could decide that. Um, no, no, no. I want to um, have the collage on the inside, but you know what? I can decide that too. So I kind of have my my little pieces um, divided into colors a little bit. I have pinks and greens and a lot of neutrals. I have a little bit of browns and then I have some that are um, have patterns and things on them. So I'm just going to start. And as I'm doing, um, I'm going to, actually this would be a really good, I'm gonna save this for uh, a tag back because it's kind of that thicker material. Um, yes, so Hawaii. Um, I lived in Hawaii, well the reason that I lived in Hawaii is because my um, well my fiance um, whatever you want to say he got stationed there so um, my husband and I started we didn't we actually went to high school together but we did not start dating until after we graduated don't ask me why it, that story is funny in an in and of itself and I might talk about that um, maybe next week um, but yes so so um, and so we got together and then he was already he had already signed up for the military so he was going into the Navy in this the summer after we graduated so um, so yeah, so he went into the Navy, did his thing, blah, blah, blah. And um, he ended up being stationed in Hawaii. Um, and then he came home for Christmas and uh, we got engaged. Uh, so, so he was stationed in Hawaii. And I think... I think he was supposed to be there for three years. Uh, I can't remember exactly. Um, but so we got married on July 24th in 1982. Uh, yeah, we've been married for 40 years. And um, yeah, the very next day, July 25th, we hopped on a plane and um, moved to Hawaii. So. Scott, my husband, he was already um, set up there. So he already had a, a place for us to live and um, uh, which was really cool. Um, it was a beautiful um, it was a beautiful condo. So basically it was, you know, like back in the old, in the old days we didn't have Airbnb but it was kind of like that only they they um, they rent, you know, rented it out for good. We, we had a lease for six months. So, um, and it was beautiful, stunning. Like we, um, we lived on Oahu. It was, um, we lived, uh, he was stationed at, um, a naval air station called Barber's Point Naval Air Station, and it, it is not there anymore. It is now a resort, um, uh, which is kind of fun, and we have not been back there. But we, um, 
So we lived in that apartment for the first six months that we were married. It was way out in a place called the Makaha Valley. And um, it was uh, on the Makaha Valley golf course, basically. You drove through the golf course to get to our, our um, house, condo, whatever you want to call it. And um, so, so we're basically at the far end of the island that's opposite of, um, well, not opposite exactly, but kind of opposite of the North Shore. Um, so the, we were on the leeward side, side of the island, which is the drier side. Um, and we... Uh, I'm gonna have to close my window hang on okay so just like maybe five minute drive from our um, house a con condo whatever you want to call it there was um, a beach called um, Yokohama Beach and it was um, <laughs> only locals went there <laughs> and so what that meant was that it there was never any people there like we literally hung out on that beach we could be there for hours and not see another person i'm guessing you know 40 years later that's probably not not the case anymore uh but it was when we lived there and it was fabulous and it was i mean basically if the road kept going i think it would eventually you know not driving very far maybe 15 20 minutes you would be at the north shore which is where, you know, they have all the, the like, um, surfing competitions and all that. But there was lots of surfers at the beach we were at because it, it had pretty, pretty decent waves. Um, but yeah, so we, yeah, we lived there for six months. And then after that, we, um, we decided to move on base, um, which was, I, which I needed, uh, because I was pretty isolated out there, um, where we were, um, I was, oh, I was only 19 when we got married. Uh, and so, uh, I was lonely. <laughs> I had no one to hang out with. I didn't know anyone. Um, and so, uh, so we moved on base and that was really great because, um, I was able to start, um, I did some volunteer work, um, which kind of led to then a paying job. Um, but I, I thrived on base because it was close to everything. Um, yeah, where we were out in the Macaw Valley, we were like probably 30 minutes away from the base. And then again, another 20 or 30 minutes away from any decent like shopping. Um, so basically Barber's Point was about 20 or 30. I say 20 or 30 because in Hawaii time, um, which is much slower than normal time, it's like 30 minute drive. Um, but in normal time, it's probably a 20 minute drive, but, um, Hawaii moves at a different speed and it's extremely fun. So, so yeah, so that's, and, and so then we moved on base and we lived there uh, for the whole time that we lived there. So it ended up that after three years, um, my husband requested an extension and it was the 80s. So there was no conflicts going on. Um, so there really wasn't a whole, he was in um, not like the, na the Navy like the ship people, he didn't go out on ship. He was a CB, which um, is a, a CB is construction battalion. So he had, um, he was a heavy equipment operator. And so um, that was his job was to, um, you know, like um, a couple of big jobs that he did that I remember was um, like, tearing down um uh like offices and things in on some other bases and so um so yeah so he did that and he ran the um 
their transportation office. And so when, um, like when the Blue Angels came to town, um, he got to drive them around. Um, if you don't know, the Blue Angels are a um, Navy aviate, aviator group. Um, you can look them up. Um, I grew up watching the Blue Angels. Um, I was a huge, I still am a huge airplane um, buff. I, lo I love, um, yeah, I, I love airplanes. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so he did that. And um, yeah, so we were there five, well, we were there four and a half years. I was there actually four years. Scott was there six months longer than I was. So, um, so yeah, and then he did not, he did not re-enlist. So, uh, when his uh, time was up, he, he got out of the, he got out of the Navy. Um, wasn't, it really didn't fit, um, with kind of our, I don't know, our lifestyle. And, and if he were to stay in, he definitely would have been what they call out on deployment, which is, you know, being out, being gone for, could be gone up to six months. Um, and neither one of us were really, uh, really, you know, wanting to do that. So, so yeah, so we stay and we, um, I, I kind of had a bad attitude about living in Hawaii. Um, I don't, I, even back then I did not like, um, warm weather. And I also was used to being able to get in the car and, uh, drive for three hours. And that's not something that you do in Hawaii. Um, the island Oahu is fairly small. It's not the smallest island, but, um, it was just, it was small enough to make me feel feel very claustrophobic much of the time um you know it was fun when we had uh people come visit um you know we did all the sightseeing things that you do and yeah we had a few few people visited um my parents and my brother and um scott's mom and scott's sister and uh we had like a couple of my great aunt and uncles, but they stayed downtown. So we just went in and met them when they were there. Um, my, uh, one of my really good friends, she came just, so we moved there in July of 82 or I moved there in July of 82 and she came over in February of 82. And of course there was a big hurricane. Um, hurricane Eva came through and, uh, really made a mess of, everything it was uh it was scary um we lost power for uh i don't know how many days it was um yeah it was terrible like um hvac units off the roof you know came down and landed in the concrete and uh it was scary uh, but she was she was visiting for that so that was kind of a a fun adventure um so I was in a hurricane. That's the first and only time that I was in a hurricane. <laughs> uh, we get some strong winds here in Seattle. Um, we haven't for many, many years, knock on wood. Uh, but we've we've had some, we've had our share. Uh, but this was really scary because it was, you know, it changed the whole beat, the beaches, like sand covered all the roads and there were um, uh, like telephone poles that just snapped off like twigs. Um, so that was, uh, that was pretty scary. And, um, and yeah, so I'm trying to think anything else. Um, yeah, on base living was interesting. None of the houses have heat and none of the houses have air conditioning. So, um, you pretty much get, uh, acclimated to the weather there. And, um, I do have photos of, 
like Christmas time where it would get down, you know, in the 60s. That was considered like a, a cold spell. And I have pictures of us like sitting around the oven with coats on because <laughs> we were cold. Uh, so funny. Um, we also, well, we found an abandoned cat when we were there. And then we ended up, our neighbor's cat had kittens and we got two more kittens. So when we left Hawaii, we, we came home with three cats. Um, and that was always an adventure because we lived that the base at the time was surrounded by sugar cane and the way they prepped the field to plant again was to burn the sugar cane and so um all the critters and there are a lot of critters in hawaii um when you go and visit and stay in a nice resort or hotel, you don't ever see the critters, but there are critters. Um, they come running right straight to our house when the uh, field would be burned. And um, yeah, everything would turn sooty in our, in our house um, because, you know, you have the windows open all the time. And... Um, Yeah, so that, that was an adventure. So the cats would catch um, mice. I remember at one point that each of them had like two mice that they were playing with. So three cats, six mice. Um, one time we came home and there was a six inch centipede in the house. Um, and the funny thing is my husband's terrified of centipedes. And so, yeah, that was... <laughs> That was fun. And then another time there was, um, they have these uh, things called cane spiders. And they are, I, I, I know some of you might think I'm exaggerating, but they are so big, like leg to leg, maybe five to six inches. Um, biggest spiders I've ever seen in my life. Um, and I hate spiders. Um, so we had one of those in our house. Um, and we found out my husband threw like a shoe or something at it. It was trying, it was up high on a wall um, in the stairwell and we couldn't reach it. Um, and he threw a shoe at it. And that's when we found out that they jumped. Um, yeah, jumping cane spiders. That was... And then we just got used to, um, you know, cockroaches and, and ants, um, yeah, ants galore, um, the little red ants, the little tiny ones, um, they just get everywhere. And we kept, we, we used to keep our, um, our cereal boxes of cereal in the freezer, um, so one, the ants couldn't get to it, and two, if there were ants in it, they just died. And you could you could either just pick them out or just eat them. I mean, it's, I mean, it's like you know the the little the, they're tiny little ants, and so it's just like uh, my husband would have his cereal and just say, yeah, protein. Um. So yeah, so that's kind of a fun story. Uh, we never did, I don't know if I said this already, but we never did go visit one of the, any of the other islands, which that is my one really major regret is that we didn't go exploring the other islands. Um, one year we're going to go back um, and see everything and probably, you know, stay at the resort where um, our home used to be. And, um, I'm excited for that. And, you know, I know we had planned to do quite a bit of traveling, um, right when COVID hit, we were planning to go to, um, to Europe. We were gonna, we were gonna go, we had this kind of this whole thing planned. We were going to go to, uh, fly into Paris and then, um, 
however we were we didn't quite get that much um, plan like traveling wise but we were gonna go to um, the Netherlands and uh, Belgium and Amsterdam and um, uh, the um, not the Ukraine um, Hungary um, are we were gonna travel be traveling with our neighbors um, and she is her fan her parents are came from Hungary and so um, so yeah we were gonna go do that we we're gonna have the best you know tour guides and then COVID hit so that that was kind of that put an end to that um, so what I was starting to say was I, I think we probably would have done the Europe trip in 2020 and then probably this sometime this year we probably would have gone to Hawaii um, but like I said just everything changed so um, we are going to Alaska in October um, the first week of October I'm pretty excited about that um, so that, that'll be fun um, but yeah, as far as getting back to Hawaii, I, I do, I really, really do want to get back there. Um, I did learn, um, uh, I worked with a lot of, um, Filipino ladies and, uh, I learned to eat the most amazing Hawaiian and Filipino food, um, that I still love to this day, um, the Kahlua pork and... Uh, lumpia which is a I thought it was Filipino but it could be Hawaiian I don't know there's a vegetable dish I think it's called something like pensit or something and um, I loved that um, yeah it was um, I was definitely exposed to things I was never exposed to in my in you know living in Seattle <laughs> so so yeah so that was cool and I think I'm trying to think if there's anything else we made a lot of friends but we did not keep in touch um, you know we were so young and you know things like that that just didn't I don't know just didn't seem important I guess yeah, I don't know. We came home um, because the speed of Hawaii is, you know, <laughs> it's just different than anywhere I've ever been. Um, it's just so relaxed. They're just so relaxed about everything. Um, it was like literally culture shock being in Seattle. Everyone drove so fast. And yeah, it was just like, wow, I not sure was it like this before we left <laughs> my husband and I would say that to each other was this was this it real um, so so yeah that's, uh, that's all I can really think of we did go you know when people would visit we we went to like a luau on the beach um, that was really fun um, I'm trying to think my I mean it's pretty pathetic but my most favorite things to do there were um well we used to ride our so the the base had a beach um so we would ride our bikes to the beach and that was the beach wasn't the greatest but you know it was still a beach in hawaii and it was free um we'd ride our bikes there and then uh another thing i loved to do was there were horse stables on on base and I used to like to go visit the horse, even though I was never a horse girl, like I, or I was never, ever into horses, but it was, there was something home, like going, um, you know, going to see the horses. So we would do that. And, um, I, you know, I was young, so shopping, uh, there was a place called the IA Mall, and that was, you know, loved going there. Um, by the time 
I, I worked for the Armed Services YMCA, and um, that was really fun. Uh, it was a, um, it, well, it was a nonprofit that assisted uh, uh, service people's families, like when they were out on deployment and, um, you know, moms that didn't get a break from their kids. We used to, we used to have um, women's day trips and, um, you know, we'd have a van and, you know, our, our director would drive the van and, and the, um, we provided daycare, so they got to get away from their kids. So I went on tons of those kinds of outings and those were really fun, but I didn't have kids, you know, we got married in 82, but our first child was not born until 92. So, um, you know, it was a little hard for me to relate to people who had kids at that point in my life. I, I did not want to have kids, so I couldn't like really relate to them <laughs> at all. Um, which, you know, I mean, I, I understood what we did was really cool. I know my mom, um, and we'd do classes, so, um, and most people volunteered to teach classes. One time, my mom, um, she came, I think they were here visiting for like three weeks, and she taught, um, I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember those baskets that you made out of bread. So you'd like, you'd use, you'd do like strips of bread dough and then mold them over like a loaf pan and um, and s a spray them with something. I don't know with, with what, but my mom actually taught a class to the ladies and um, of course they all loved her. Everyone always loved my mom. Um, so that was kind of fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was a good, good experience. Good. Um, I... I will, I, I've said this many times, um, you know, to people I know, and especially young people who get married. Um, the reason I, I'm convinced that the reason why our marriage lasted was because, um, we had to learn to, uh, work things out because, you know, we were very young, um, and we could not just drive home and give up so we couldn't you know we we were we were literally stuck on a rock and um so yeah we had to learn how to communicate and um oh that's gross yeah we had to yeah we just had to learn to be with each other and um like i said communicate so i i i do um credit the four and a half years of living without any family support um, and not even support, but influence. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. Um, because you, you could call, um, but back then it was so expensive. Long distance was so expensive. So it was, you know, usually it, it was my mom who called me or, or you know, Scott's mom called him uh, because we we were dirt poor they don't pay the military anything and so um and it was hawaii where cost of living was really expensive and um and yeah so i i really think that 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 taught us to rely on each other i think is kind of the main thing Okay, so I talked a lot about Hawaii. I'm sure I forgot some things, and if I think of anything, I'll, I'll talk about it on another Fantastic Friday. But thank you, Justine, for the question. I really appreciate it. And, yeah, any other questions that you have? Anybody, yeah, just put them in the, uh, put them in the comments, and I will answer. Um, so, yeah, so I got my... Got my little collage done. I don't know. We'll see what I end up doing with it. Um, I am kind of visualizing 
that this would be the outside. So I might end up doing like some uh, gesso and, you know, putting some other stuff on top or finding a focal point. Not sure. We'll see. But yeah, I like it. So thank you, Justine, um, for the question. Uh, yeah, I hope you had a great time. I did finish my bingo card, or I can cross off, can cross off the collage master board on here. Where's the pen? There we go. Done. So there we go. Okay, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.